G'day folks and welcome to a check on chain update where today we're going to be spending a bit of time looking at the short term holder indicator set. Now these are probably some of the most used metrics. There's actually a reason why I put them up the top of the website. Um, these are the ones that I will check the most often. And that's because they're much faster. When we're looking at short term holders specifically, we're looking at kind of that hot ball of money, the recently acquired coins, people who are active in the market, and they are the most price sensitive, and they generally drive a lot of the overall market mechanics. Now their sentiment, the way, you know, when we're actually trying to understand where the market is, what we're listening, buy the dip or sell the rip type behavior, does it look like a bull market or a bear market or it's some kind of support or resistance? These are the kind of tools because it's describing what that hot ball of money is doing. They're the most price sensitive and they're the most likely to respond. So we'll start with our on-chain framework just to kind of establish where we are in the broad scheme of things, why we're looking at these particular metrics and where they live uh, within that framework. And we'll look at MVRV, SOPA, profit loss ratio, and then supply in profit and loss. And you may have established a lot of these metrics are in the profit and loss domain. And that's uh, that is by design. So for those who aren't familiar with this, this is the check on chain framework, which we introduced on our Substack the other week. This is how I think about categorize and group metrics in the world of on chain data. And really we break it down, like imagine this cube that you see here is there's three different axes. This is the Bitcoin supply. And each of these different cubes within the grid is a different size depending on how many coins are inside it. Now, there's some coins which are moving, being spent coins that are on the move. When we talk about realized profit loss ratio, we talk about SOPA, that's taking a cross section of the spent coins. And again, we're in the cohort axis here of short-term holders. So we're looking at spent coins by short-term holders in profit or loss. So we're talking about something in this cube for short-term SOPA. When we look at short-term MVRV, it's gonna be the unspent coins, coins they still hold in profit or in loss. So what we're about to go over is four different metrics. There's MVRV and supply and profit loss. And then there's SOPA and realized profit loss ratio, which will be on the left and right side respectively in those two different pairs. So starting with MVRV, which is probably the easiest one to get your head around, it is the unrealized profit multiple. So in other words, let's take all of the short-term holder coins, high values, right? If we're getting up here at 1.6, that means that the average investor, short-term holder, is up 60% because one is their cost basis at break even. So 1.6 means they're up 60%, right? They're holding a 60% profit. Why is MVRV important? Because when you get these higher levels, the incentive to take profits starts to increase. Now you can see that during a bull market, 2017, 2020, um, 2023, and four. We generally find resistance in or sometimes 1.2, but generally up closer to 1.4. So 40% profit is usually enough for short-term holders to start taking chips off the table. Once we get up and above that level, we're starting to enter the more euphoric phase of the bull. And we haven't got there yet, right? We've actually come back down, retested their break-even level. Remember, a level of one means that we've retested the short-term holder cost basis. So if we bring it all to our current market cycle, let's look at cycle four and only look at this particular environment, what we can see is that we've had this early period of profit taking, right? We got up to these high levels, they took profits, we corrected, and then we have found support on the short-term cost basis, which is currently about 61,500. Now, big picture, this looks more like bull market territory because we are consistently testing and finding support on the short-term cost basis. When we break below it and we start to find resistance, that is a regime shift. People move from buying the dip to selling the rip. And that's a very, very important distinction. It really does change the dynamics of what's going on. And that's something to pay attention to. So far, we appear to be finding support. What we don't wanna see is a break below and then a retest and it fail because that becomes selling the rip behavior. So far, so good. And this nice little rebound we had here at 57,000, uh, that was another one of the uh, reports we did for our Substack uh, readers at the time. Now, the second metric is the supply in profit loss. Now, this one here is also in the unspent domain. So again, we're looking at the coins that are held by these investors. So whereas MVRV is kind of the percent that they're in or out of profit, right? 1.6 means 60% profit. Here we're looking at, let's take all the short-term holder coins, right? Let's just say we've got 100 of them. If 60 of them are in profit, right? That's gonna be in the numerator. If 40 of them are in loss, that's gonna be in the denominator. 
That's what this metric is showing. It's showing the number of coins. So a level of one is 50-50. Half of the short-term holder coins are in profit, half of them are held in loss. Now, where that cost basis is, is obviously important. That's what the MVR, we have to look at these two things in tandem because there's a, is your coin in profit? And then there's the other question of, well, by how much, right? And those two things really play off each other. Now, very similar to MVR, you'll see, and again, with all of these metrics, you'll see that this break-even level of one. So if you're looking for confluence, right, during some kind of a dip type environment, if you're getting a retest across all of these metrics, there's two things to be aware of. One, it could break below and become a bear market. That's always a scenario that can happen. Just the same as in a bear market, we could always retest it and it breaks through and becomes a bull market, right? Trend shifts are always one to be aware of. But simultaneously, when the market sells off and gets down to one of these levels, it's also where dips tend to find their floor, right? Because you get to that 50-50 level, there's enough people in loss that you reach a level of seller exhaustion. So we got down to 0.6, right? Which actually means that roughly around two thirds of all short-term holder coins were actually held in a loss. This is in log scale. So this was actually a point of serious stress. But in terms of MVRV, the amount that they were underwater wasn't that significant. So yes, there was a lot of coins that were underwater, technically. Binary speaking, it was underwater by you know one cent, two cents, fifty dollars, whatever that price differential was. They were held under their cost basis, but it wasn't enough to create the full scale panic of a bear. So in that regard, when we were looking at this particular environment, getting down to this level is where you would expect a dip to form. Always with one eye saying, well, if it keeps going and it keeps getting worse, we move into top heavy environments and that can start to look a little bit more like a bear market. But since then, we've actually had a very, very strong bounce, returning all of those coins back into a profit almost entirely. We got to about 93% of all short-term supply held in profit at that time. Okay, so now we're moving across to the right-hand side of the framework. What we've just assessed is the coins that short-term holders still hang on to, how in profit or loss are they? The next one is to say, well, if we have these incentives, right? We talked before about MVRV getting up to 1.6 or 1.4. That's when people start to actually take chips off the table. Now we're going to say, well, did they actually do that? Because obviously sell side pressure actually requires the coins to get sold. And let's say that short-term MVRV goes to 1.6, but no one actually sells, then the market has no resistance and it can just keep going. So generally speaking, there will be a profit-taking event, which will show up in SOPA. So SOPA is the realized profit or loss ratio. It's the amount of actual chips taken off the table, right? What is the average percent locked in by that short-term holder cohort? Now, what's important is, again, during bull markets, we get these much deeper undercuts. Notice that one isn't so much of a strong level of support as it is in the unrealized metrics. In the realized sense, these are people who buy high panic selling low. And as a contrarian in markets, you actually want to see, right? If you're a bull and you believe that Bitcoin is in a uptrend and a resilient uptrend, people will buy high. We actually want to watch them sell and get out of the loss and panic. Generally speaking, that's like a micro capitulation usually happens near local bottoms. So it is a good indicator when you get a strong and most importantly here, sharp retest below. You want to see these sharp undercuts. The deeper it is, actually the better, but not too deep, right? And you can see here, these bear markets, we went under and we stayed there. This is now sustained panic selling. And this is really where I think the bear market in 2021 set in. You can see it as we came off the all-time high. Here's literally the all-time high in November. Very shortly after, we started retesting from below and we were finding resistance. We are no longer buying the dip. We are now selling the rip. Very, very different mechanics. These are people who the moment they get into profit, they're taking those chips off the table. Get me out of this thing. I want to get out as close to my cost base as I possibly can. Very, very much bear market behavior. So SOPA is great for really getting that. It's a much noisier metric, but the more time you spend with it, this is, I mean, SOPA is just an incredibly powerful tool. Great for understanding the overall trend of the market but certainly looking for those contrarian, what you want to see people buy high and sell low. Ironically enough, that's usually the time when dips find their local lows, but exactly the opposite in a bear. When you get uptrends, that's when people start taking chips off the table. You know that sell side is coming back into the market, something to be aware of.
Now, one last thing I want to touch on with SOPA is once we get these sharp undercuts and then a recovery bounce, profit taking is also demonstrating a form of capital inflow. So we actually want to see people taking profits and the market being able to absorb and keep going. So profit taking is also a representation of capital inflows. But of course, too much profit taking results in too much. So there's not enough demand to actually absorb those coins. So everything in markets is a double-edged sword. You've got to hold both views at the same time. Up is good, but two up is not so good, right? And it starts to reach these crescendos where things just get oversaturated um, and create local or global highs. Now, closing out here, again, we're still within the spent domain. So this is the um, same way that we looked at supply in profit and loss, and we're taking the ratio between these two. Here, we're looking at all of the US dollar value in profit, right? People taking chips off the table. And we're comparing that to all the USD value of losses. Now, this will again operate within log space, right? So one means that of all the coins being spent, 50% are in profit, 50% are in loss. And we can again see that we get these nice little sharp undercuts. These are things we want to pay attention to during dips. We want to see these people getting shaken out at the highs. And here's a really important point. The focus point is short-term holders. Now up here, remember short-term holders is about five months, 155 days. 155 days ago, we were much lower than our current price, right? So we were probably only just starting the ETF run-up, right? We talked about five months ago. We we're only just starting the run-up probably down about 45,000. So that means that the only people in the whole market who can possibly have held their coins for less than five months and be in loss are people who bought the highs. So that's why short-term holders, when we're in a bull market, particularly above the previous cycle all-time high, this is why short-term holder indicators are so important because they are the only people that can possibly be in loss at local top buyers. So essentially, these local top buyers will keep doing it, right? Someone always has to be wrong. That's just the nature of markets. Someone buys high, and we are looking for when those people specifically start to sell low. That's generally when you get these dips and these strong bounces. Notice here in 2021, this was not a normal dip. We got much deeper than we usually do from all of these corrections, and we stayed there. And then we started to find resistance. This was the first warning shot saying things are not okay. We can see it back here in 2017 as well. Major sell-off. Yes, we got back into profit, but nowhere near where we were. Losses were now dominating the sell side. People are panicking, and you can see this trend stayed for many, many months. And actually, each of these profit-taking events was actually a local peak during the rallies, right? So this is kind of a contrarian signal, but within a bear market context. So anyway, folks, hopefully that's a useful overview. These are some of the metrics I will check the most often. Short-term holders, because it's much faster, there's a lot more noise, but the more time you spend with these things, the more kind of become in tune with what these signals mean. The break-even level of one is always a point of resistance and support, and it can break in the other direction, which means that your bias generally will flip. And too high or too low is usually something that occurs near local or global tops and bottoms, right? Some kind of major extreme, large amounts of profit establishes a local high. Large amounts of profit can establish a global high. But likewise, massive losses generally signify some kind of capitulation style event. And you know that is usually some kind of an inflection point. So anyway, folks, hopefully you found that useful. Um, if you want to find out more, jump over to checkonchain.com and check out our newsletter. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.